Selena Quintanilla, La Reina Tejano, La Madonna Mexicana, and Testigo de Jehovah? Yes, that's right, the greatest female Latin artist of all time was in fact a Jehovah's Witness. You know, those kindly weirdos that knock at your door at all hours of the morning and throw magazines at you? Selena was actually quite committed to her religion, but she was famously secretive about it. Ironically, the Jehovah's Witness faith is also one of secrecy and many layers. So, on this Selena Day, we will be exploring this Tex-Mex music icon and her complicated relationship with her family's faith. We would be honored if you would join us. The Quintanilla's history in the Jehovah's Witnesses dates back to the early 1950s. This is where Abraham Quintanilla Sr., along with his wife Maria, would have converted to the Jehovah's Witness faith from the Catholic Church, bringing Abraham Jr. along with them. Abraham Quintanilla Jr. himself, while he wasn't a formal witness at the time, did continue to bring his family to the Kingdom Hall. The children were brought up in the faith and were subject to its many rules and restrictions. In Joe Nick Potosky's book Selena, Potosky quotes a classmate discussing Selena's exclusion from holiday and birthday parties. She was a Jehovah's Witness, recalled Meredith Lynn Capel. In our school, that meant any time there was a party, she had to go to the library or she went home. She missed out on all the fun and I hated that. I had a birthday party and she couldn't come. This is actually a common feature in Jehovah's Witness upbringings. The religion forbids the celebration of birthdays, whether it's for yourself, a family member, or anyone else. The Bible says you can't. Uh, it says... Come on, what does it say? Holidays are also forbidden. These range from the large-scale ones like Christmas, New Year's, and Halloween, to the much smaller ones like Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, and even Mother and Father's Day. The reasoning the Jehovah's Witness official magazine, The Watchtower, offers for the prohibition is this. To separate themselves completely from teachings that are spiritually unclean, that is, contrary to what the Bible states. Unfortunately, in the cyborg's opinion, this further serves the secretive, insular nature of the Watchtower organization. According to the actor Naomi Gonzalez, who portrays Selena's sister Suzette in the Netflix series, Selena's upgrading was somewhat isolated. In an interview with Distractify before the series premiere, she said, quote, The family were Jehovah's Witnesses, so they really only stayed with themselves and with the extended Cantania family, and they traveled a lot, she said. So this life experience as a family unit was very insular. This is consistent with Jehovah's Witness doctrine of good association. According to the 1967 August 1st Watchtower in the article Keep Useful Habits by Good Association, surely only our Christian brothers can provide us with good association that will help us keep our useful habits. Christian, in this context, refers exclusively to those of the Jehovah's Witness faith. Due to the restrictions we've outlined here, it's quite likely that Selena's childhood was rather lonely. Selena was a prodigious singer, with her talents apparent as early as age six. Her and her family honed the Tejano Queen's talents consistently until her fame exploded around the age of 21. Here is when her faith came into direct opposition to her art. The Jehovah's Witness religion decries the pursuit of fame and fortune, instead encouraging its members to pursue a life dedicated to evangelism. When I first came to Bethel, I had to put music aside for a little bit. I started working in the press room, and uh, that was a completely different environment for me. The April 1st, 1978 Watchtower says, quote, Clearly, the pursuit of fame and fortune is not satisfying. Since this is also true of other material goals, what should a person make his primary aim in life? And, while according to her father Abraham, Selena continued to study the faith and was learning from a baptized witness, she found her true calling elsewhere. According to Chris Perez, Selena's husband, Selena's greatest passion was actually her fashion design. While she loved the family business, that being Selena y los Dinos, her fashion line was much closer to her heart. This extended not only to her formal boutique, but even the wardrobe she designed for her performances. Unfortunately, this created conflict in her extended Jehovah's Witness family. 
Jehovah's Witnesses are notoriously conservative, especially when it comes to attire. The 2002 Kingdom Ministry highlights the importance of modesty in Jehovah's Witness culture in an article about dress and grooming. It states, in part, the clothing we wear and the way that we wear it makes a definite statement about us, our beliefs, attitude, and intentions. The styles that we choose state who we are and what we stand for. We must never promote the debased thinking and conduct that is popularized by the world. The religion takes this tenet so seriously that some articles of clothing are outright prohibited. Dear sisters, please, avoid short skirts or dresses above the knee, tight-fitting, revealing, low-cut, or otherwise immodest clothing. Selena's image as a pop star directly contradicted these values, not only by merit of the industry she was in, but also in her personal selection of attire. Her uncle Eddie Quintanilla was quite concerned about her fashion choices on stage, calling them, let's say, flamboyant. Rhinestones, bralettes, and tight pants, all direct contradictions to the Jehovah's Witness rendering of 1 Timothy chapter 2. Likewise, the women should adorn themselves in appropriate dress, with modesty and soundness of mind, not with styles of hair braiding and gold or pearls or very expensive clothing, but in the way that is proper for women professing devotion to God, namely through good works. As Selena's study of the New World Translation Bible was cut short prematurely, we'll never know exactly how her internal culture war would have resolved itself. I... Selena famously sang about love and heartbreak, but contrary to popular belief, her love life wasn't as tumultuous as her lyrics imply. This was likely, in part, due to the restrictive nature of Jehovah's Witness dating culture. In addition to Jehovah's Witnesses being restricted to whom they associate with, further restrictions are placed on dating. The religion is famous for its hyper-specific standards of dating, especially amongst young people. Dating is heavily monitored, even amongst adults. Culturally, the practice is basically pre-engagement. According to a JW.org article on dating, Dating has one purpose in the religion. Dating should have an honorable purpose, to help a young man and woman determine if they want to get married to each other. Notice the emphasis on the terms young man and woman. That's because, like many other Christian fundamentalist groups, Jehovah's Witnesses only recognize heterosexual relationships. Well, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and we believe the Bible teaches sex is for a man and a woman who are married. Intolerant people. With that in mind, it's no surprise that Abraham Quintanilla did not approve of Selena's relationship with Chris Perez. According to Chris Perez's book, To Selena with Love, Abraham was worried that Chris would take over as the family head and force Selena to be a stay at home wife, thus destroying Selena's promising musical career. Quote, Abraham's was the kind of marriage where his word was law, and Marcela and the children obeyed that law. He might also fear that whomever Selena married might then dictate what she did, including leaving her musical career to start a family. The rest of the band was very aware of the way Abraham ran both the family business and his children's lives, so this was no surprise. Everyone in the band had personal lives and secrets. We all had to figure out a way around Abraham, who was a conservative man, a devout Jehovah's Witness, and a traditional father. Ironically, this fear is supported by Abraham's own Jehovah's Witness beliefs, the belief of headship. Insight on the Scriptures, Volume 1, offers this explanation, quote, Therefore, the woman, in God's arrangement for family, was always to be in subjection to her husband, and was not to usurp his authority. Also, in the Christian congregation, the woman is not to teach other dedicated men, nor exercise authority over them. In the absence of a husband, the father remains the family head in Jehovah's Witnesses, but this is immediately changed once a Jehovah's Witness daughter is married. This is further compounded in that Jehovah's Witnesses are only encouraged to date and marry within the faith. Christians who want to marry are commanded to choose only a fellow believer. Jehovah's Witnesses view this command as referring not merely to a person who respects our beliefs, but to one who shares and practices those beliefs as a baptized witness. 
God has always directed His worshipers to marry only those of the same faith. This command is also practical, as modern researchers have found. Given the Jehovah's Witness view on fame, if Selina had married a practicing Jehovah's Witness, Abraham's worst fear may very well have materialized, highlighting another striking contradiction in the fabric of Selina's life. Tejano USA, like I said, we've got all the big artists. Guess who we got here? Selena Quintanilla. <laughs> Selena, bienvenidos a Tejano USA. Thank you, Waldo. It's nice, good to be here. Nice to see you. Despite all of her challenges, both in career and her religious restrictions, Selena achieved her goal. By the end of her life, she had a flourishing career that garnered her a Grammy and was about to bring her international stardom and a loving husband with whom she planned on having children. Tragically, Selena was shot and killed just a few weeks before her 24th birthday by her former friend and fan club president. In a final clash between the world who loved her and the religion she followed, surgeons attempted to save her life with a blood transfusion. This greatly upset her father Abraham Quintanilla, who firmly believed that Selena would not have wanted the blood transfusion. He stated that Selena would not have wanted that, as witnesses believe in the sanctity of blood. Jehovah's Witness doctrine is very meticulous around the transfusion of blood, even in life-threatening circumstances. The religion actually forbids the members from knowingly accepting a whole blood transfusion. Quote, does this mean that Christians should also refuse blood transfusions? Yes, it does. Jehovah commanded us not to eat or drink blood. If a doctor told you not to drink alcohol, would you inject it into your body? Of course not. In the same way, the command not to eat or drink blood means that we would not accept a blood transfusion. And while there are certain blood fractions and components that a witness may accept in treatment, it is said that it is more important to obey Jehovah than to try and extend our life by disobeying him. Despite their best efforts, Selena passed away on March 31st of 1995. Her legions of fans, growing by the day, continued to memorialize the late Tejano singer, especially on her state-sanctioned holiday of Selena Day. Reportedly, this brings mixed feelings to the Quintanilla family. Abraham himself was quoted stating the following, As Jehovah's Witnesses, we don't celebrate deaths or birthdays, and we don't want people to think we're behind all the festivities. While the family has also expressed appreciation to the fans for keeping her memory alive, their religious beliefs do not align with the style of celebration. While the witnesses do hold funerals, they only celebrate one memorial celebration. The day of the memorial, or the memorial of Christ Jesus' death, basically Passover but without the Easter attached to it. Ironically, this year it fell on April 15th, just a day before Selena Day. That isn't to say that Selena's family doesn't miss or remember her. In fact, they look forward to a critical tenet of their faith, the resurrection. While it's common knowledge that Jehovah's Witnesses believe in a pending Armageddon or end of the world, it is less known that they don't believe in an afterlife per se. Rather, they preach that those who survive the War of God will get to live forever on a paradise earth. While this does not include everyone on earth, they believe that faithful Jehovah's Witnesses practicing the teachings of Jesus will survive, and those who do not will not. Not everyone will be set free from sickness and aging. In fact, people who disobey God, as Adam did, will lose the privilege of life. Only people who are forgiven for their sins will enjoy eternal life. Additionally, they believe that all of mankind who has died before the Holy War of Armageddon will receive another chance at eternal life via a resurrection, where they will be restored to life on a perfect earth and be given a chance to become a practicing Jehovah's Witness for all eternity. God grants Jesus the power to raise the dead. Jesus will restore all those in the memorial tombs to life, each one with his unique identity, personality, and memories. John 5, 28 and 29 Those resurrected to heaven receive a spirit body, while those resurrected to life on earth receive a healthy physical body, completely sound. Her family maintains the belief that they will see their daughter again. Quote, Not a day goes by that we don't miss and think about you. The hope of the resurrection keeps us going, for we know that we will see you again in the new order. We love you. 
love, mom and dad. Selena's life was a unique one, rife with challenge and blessed with success. Never an officially baptized member of the religion, but always beholden to the tenants. And while she isn't the only celebrity to grow up in the Jehovah's Witness faith, she remains one of the most enduring. One can only imagine the struggles of being a progressive, forward-thinking woman beholden to such a conservative and patriarchal religion. We may never know how the struggle with her identity would have turned out if things were different, but we do know that she stands as an icon and an example for those who work hard and never give up on their passions. Bye.